Let's look at this problem, number four, and this is finding the limits by using a graph. So we're, giving, we're given a function that is defined um, a, as a piecewise defined function, and we're going to sketch the graph. And actually, we're going to determine the values um, of a, of a number a, for which the limit of f of x as x approaches a does not exist. So it's, it's under the heading of using the graph of function to determine a limit. All right, so, but we're gonna actually see where the limit doesn't exist, but let's sketch the graph first and then answer that question. And um, all right, so what is going on is that the domain of this function, which is all real numbers, is being broken into three different intervals. The first interval is when X is less than zero. And when x is less than zero, we see that y is equal to one plus sine x. I guess I copied this out of some textbook. It's, it's a little bit challenging, but the sine, x, the sine graph is a wave function. But this, it's, it's a wave function and uh, it passes through the origin when you have y equals sine x. So y equals sine x is a wave function that passes through the origin because sine is zero, zero. Now, and this is one plus sine x. So what it does is it, it, it uh, shifts the sine graph up by one. Now I'm putting this little dotted line. I might erase it later because it's not a horizontal asymptote. It's a guideline. And what I do is I, I draw the sine graph um, sort of pretending that it's, that that, that that horizontal line that I'm doing, which is y equals one, I'm going to pretend for the moment that that's the, the y-axis, so I can do that shift up by one. I'm also doing something which is I'm not making the scale of x and y the same. So first of all, I did that all in purple uh, dotted, but I'm gonna now come back and bolden that. And I'm only gonna bolden the part where x is less than zero, and I'm actually gonna then, then come back and erase the, the, the stuff on the right. Actually, I might erase that dotted line, but it's this is sine x shifted up by one. And the I might just really cheat a lot on the uh, the scaling. Definitely the x and y are not to the same scale. Now for the next part is between zero and pi. Um, here's pi over here. Between zero and pi, I have y equals cosine x. That's maybe a little easier to do because I don't have a, a, um, a shift up. Um, okay, hold on. I left off something that's important about this one plus sine x. That's only for x less than zero. And I need to put a big circle there to indicate that that's when x is less than zero. Now, next I'm gonna come back and do this cosine graph. Should I use a different color? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna do it. For the cosine graph, this is what cosine looks like. It's another wave function, but cosine of zero is one. So it starts at the top there. I'm gonna make it really look like a wave. No, oh, it's not that good. Okay. Um, and it, it, okay. So actually, let me start off with the dotted line and color in. So this is our, what, this is a, a, a cosine function. And that is all the way up to two pi, but I'm only gonna color, color in, shade in or bold or whatever, between zero and pi. That's the cosine function. And I'm gonna circle that place right there, um, the intercept zero one, because it's x greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to pi. I'll, I'll put a little dot there. The next one is back to y equals sine x. And I guess I'll, this, I'll, I'll draw a dotted line here. It's, it's not so easy, right? It's a little bit of a challenge to do all these. This is y equals sine x. I'm gonna just do the dotted line then I'm gonna erase the dotted line. Actually, I need to go back and erase this blue dotted line. Okay, um, so that's the next part, which is the, bot the bottom is uh, y equals sine x. X is greater than pi. 
And um, okay, and so what I can do then is I can just color that in with with um, a bold. Maybe I need the bold a little brighter or darker or I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna erase that that part there. Okay. So, um, I mean, so much of this is I'm just trying to draw a good picture. I mean, so, so that that's you know what my hemming and hawing or whatever you want to call it. Um, trying to just do a good job in this picture. But okay. So, all right. Um, and then I need to draw an open circle there. I guess I should be consistent with the color too much maybe, but anyway, okay, there we go. Now, where does the limit not exist and why? And I'll show, I'll, I'll erase this part there. Where does the limit not exist and why doesn't it exist? Well, anybody wanna speak up? Okay, I'll just speak up. Do you see where there's a jump? We see this jump at pi. We see that we see that the limit as x approaches pi from the left of our function is equal to negative one. And at the same time, the limit as x approaches pi from the right of f of x is zero. Therefore, the limit does not exist as x approaches pi. Try to make it a little neater. So what was the question? The question was sketch the graph and, sh and find where the limit does not exist. So the answer, the final answer, the game show here, okay, x equals pi, I'll write it in, in a whole sentence. The limit does not exist The limit does not exist at x equals pi. All right, does anybody have any questions about that? I mean, it's a little bit of trouble sketching the graph. What you could do is sketch all three of those graphs and then just erase so that you get the part that they want. So, you know, there's there's a part x less than zero, then there's parts between zero and pi, and then the part x greater than zero. And then the reason I'm picking out in particular pi is because I see something, I see a jump. The other ones, there's no holes or anything. Okay, so I think we'll just finish up on that video and, and just sort of, Zoom out there for the for the final screen. <laughs>